Science may in fact be the only way of knowing. Oh, it's, I get rid of the may. I am uh, 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 slightly more nuanced than hedging my but I think, I think it is accurate that it is. Well, and by science, and it's really important to point out what science, and Jerry and I have the same definition of science, which is, for me, science is just empirical investigation combined with reason. That's science. Basic, investigating things based on testing, empirical evidence, retesting, and using logical analysis to, to analyze those results. That's science. So, so for me, science is very broad. And, and for some people, that might encompass other areas. But that's the process by which we learn, we learn things about the universe, which I, which I call knowing. And, and, it's a, and even this learning about yourself is still doing that same thing, right? You're, you're still asking questions and testing when you try and learn about yourself. You're not just closing your eyes. You're asking, well, you know, why did I do that yesterday? Am I really, do I really crave that kind of attention all the time? And <laughs> anyway, yeah. I would not rush into the, we were joking earlier because uh, yesterday at the Imagine Evolution 7 conference, uh, we, just, we decided we didn't want to do anything repeat, and I was up directly before him, so I did a magic show instead, and there were a number of issues and comments, uh, and now I've completely forgotten where I was going with that story. It was good, though. I was enjoying it. <laughs> uh, if you want, like, a 50-cent refund for that. <laughs> Talk to <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I've heard you say before, or I think I've heard you say before, in response to questions that are posed, particularly some that fall into the realm of philosophy, mm -hmm. that you find some of them uninteresting. Well, look, you know, I, I always get a, a, a look. Philosophy is useful. Them. Philosophy is, is not. Philosophy is useful. Philosophy is reflection. Critical is questioning, reflecting. And it's reflecting on knowledge, usually. And, and then coming up with good questions. So philosophy is useful in those areas of human activity where the questions aren't yet well-defined. Because philosophy provides us a good tool to come up with good questions. And that, therefore, there's er, er, my friend Dan Dennett is a, is, a, is a philosopher who deals with the brain. And, there's, and the brain consciousness is an area where, really, we don't understand anything very much. The proof, why well, you can tell how much we understand in a scientific field by how many books are written about it. If there are a lot of books, that means we don't understand one. <laughs> and, because, um, you know, there's, you only need one book on quantum mechanics, and, it, and that's it. But, um, but, but, uh, but anyway, you, so in brain science, there's a lot of questions. And, and you can actually drive forward research in neuroscience and, and psychology and, uh, with, with philosophical questions. And that, that was true when natural philosophy was natural philosophy and physics. But physics has is, is gone to the point where, where the real questions aren't asked by philosophers because it's so much so much down the road that the real questions require an intimate knowledge of the physics to be able to ask the kind of right questions. And and philosophers of physics, of which there are some, and I know I'll get in trouble because I do what I say, they they ask the interesting questions themselves, but it has no impact on the physics. Zero. Because most physicists can't spell philosophy. Okay? And 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 it, I have to say in certain areas of the the philosophy of science, it has very little impact on the other philosophers. It's a field where they talk to each other. Now, they do interesting, they're very interesting sets of reasoning and thinking, but I can tell you as a fact that, the phys that there's nothing that's come out of the philosophy of science in the last, certainly since I've been a physicist, that's impacted on physicists. And that, you know, and, and that, that's not, a, that's not a, a judgment, that's not a value judgment, it's just a fact. The physicists don't read the philosophical literature, and well, um, I don't read it. Now you know nothing's come out. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that by, by coming out of it. I mean, it's, I mean, influencing. By what I mean by that is influencing the work that's being done. And 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 even my my learning, what I know about philosophy of science. Of course, I read Kuhn and other people. But but more, I learned much more about the philosophy of science by my mentors who are scientists, from Feynman and other people. I learned much more about the way science is done, how questioning is done, and the kind of questions that might be fruitful, I've learned by the people, by the scientists who taught me, not by, by the philosophers.